In the darkest hour of one Saturday night in Lolanti Kingdom, a set of twins were born, two beautiful girls born into the family of Papa and Mama Orosheke. Their father was a successful gold merchant who traded far and wide. He named the newborn twins Auro and Oshake. As the twins grew, there was a great physical difference between them. Despite the fact that they were fed the same meals and ate at the same time, Auro looked thin, skinny, and tall, while Oshake, the other twin, looked curvy. As they grew older, Auro became the object of mockery for everyone in the village because of her figure. They called her horrible names like a skeleton and a jug big bee, which means thin fish. She would often cry back home, where her parents always did their best to pacify her. Even her twin sister, Osha Kerr, would give her words of encouragement. No one wanted to be Auro's friend. Most social groups in the village rejected her. The few groups that accepted her used every chance they got to humiliate and laugh at Aworo until she got tired, fed up, and stopped attending their meetings. Oshake, on the other hand, had many friends and was a member of various social groups in the village. The only thing that kept Aworo sane in all of this madness was her cooking skills. She was a really wonderful cook, to the extent that whenever she prepared food for her family, Everyone ended up licking their plates and praising her for the delicious meal. Her home was a safe haven, but whenever she stepped out of the house, the wolves in the form of villagers were always there to ridicule her for being skinny, especially whenever she and her twin sister went to the market. People would start to compare, whisper, gossip, and stare. One afternoon, the twins headed to the market to get some food ingredients. Osha care, why did you suck Auro's blood, a fish seller said, giggling hard. Everyone in the market joined in laughing. Watch out for the strong wind tomorrow, Auro, so you don't lose your balance, another person added. Auro was so sad and dejected, she couldn't even utter a word. You should all be ashamed of yourselves, Osha care fired back angrily at them. Most of you have children. And if you don't, it must be because you are too bitter to have one. But I am sure you have siblings, yet you behave like fools. Auro was so happy her twin sister had her back. Oshake would always stand up for Auro against these mean bullies. Until one day, Ashake's boyfriend, named Aramu, came visiting. Aramu was the son of a famous cocoa farmer and he had been in a relationship with Osha Kerr for the past two years. He came to inform her that they wouldn't be getting married anymore because his family was not in support of their union. Why am I not good enough for you? Osha Kerr asked Aramo in tears. You know you're perfect, but my parents fear your twin sister's skinny gene might manifest in our children if we get married. Osha Kerr couldn't believe her ears. Her world came crashing down and she began to resent her twin sister. She cried herself to sleep every night and was eventually sent out of all her social groups because people didn't like how she stood up for her skinny twin sister. Oshake blamed all these woes and misfortunes on Auro and decided she was going to make her life miserable. One day, Auro cooked a delicious meal for the house, as she always did, but Oshake came into the kitchen and poured sand into the pot of food her sister had just made. Auro looked confused. Why did you do that? she screamed. Shut your mouth, skinny witch, Oshake fired back. The following week, Auro fetched a bucket of water and kept it in the bathroom, intending to go into her room and get changed before having a bath. Oshake sneaked into the bathroom and poured something into her sister's bathing water. Unknown to Auro, she returned and took a bath with the contaminated water. She started to scratch all over. She scratched herself so badly and screamed loudly. Her parents had to rub her body with palm oil before the itching subsided. Oshake laughed throughout, which made Auro realize her twin sister had done this to her. Unlike before, when she stood up for her sister in public, now, whenever they went to the market, 
Oshaker would loudly call Aworo a skinny skeleton in front of everyone to make them see she was done standing up for her. This made Aworo so sad, and she cried day and night. Their parents would scold Oshaker and warn her to stop humiliating Aworo. She is your twin sister for crying out loud. I didn't raise you to be this way, their mother would say. Still, Oshaker felt no remorse and refused to listen. Aworo destroyed my life. The love of my life, Aramo, left me because of this thin stick. Oshaker shouted at their mother, who couldn't believe what she had just said. Their mother got so angry and slapped Oshaker hard on the cheek. It was war, mockery, and humiliation every day for Aworo, from her twin sister and the entire village. But then, a time came when the twins village, known as Lolanti Kingdom, and two neighboring kingdoms, Mojia and Boripe were preparing for a once-in-a-decade contest called the Queen Maiden Competition. For this competition, each kingdom was supposed to put forth three of their most capable, competitive, and all-around beautiful maidens to represent their kingdom. The villagers in Lolanti started projecting the names of the three maidens they liked or thought would represent their kingdom in the Queen Maiden Competition. Some even jokingly mentioned Aworo's name, and they all laughed mockingly. One of them added, who would put a skeleton forward to represent humans, and they all laughed again. One of the other kingdoms would be hosting this year's competition because Lolanti hosted the last one. Aworo went to fetch water at the village stream one afternoon when she met a man named Adio. Adio was one of the organizers of the Queen Maiden competition from the neighboring kingdom hosting this year's contest, but Aworo didn't know this. Immediately he saw Aworo, he was thrilled and amazed by her stature. What beauty is this, he said to Aworo. You are blessed with a lovely figure that many people would kill for, Adio added. Aworo looked so confused hearing these words. She felt he was being sarcastic, but Adio was genuinely thrilled. He told her that he was in their village to get the names of the three maidens who would represent them in the upcoming competition. I am sure your name would be on the list because you look fit for the competition, Adio said confidently. But Aworo told him that wasn't going to happen because everyone hated her in the village and wouldn't even think of recommending her for such a competition. She also said that, aside from her parents, he was the first person to ever think her stature was good. Everyone else called her skeleton and other bad names. Adio was shocked to hear this and persuaded her to dress well and make sure to come watch the competition, even if she wasn't going to partake. Aworo hesitated at first, but later agreed to show up. On the day of the competition, the other two kingdoms, Lolanti and Mojia, traveled down to the palace of the host kingdom, Boraip, where the competition would take place. The twins and their parents were also present all looking radiant and elegant. After the three girls representing each kingdom in the competition were called out, the organizers announced that there would be an additional contestant sponsored by the host king himself. One of the privileges the host king enjoys in the queen maiden competition is the power to add one more maiden as a contestant. Everyone was eager to know the lucky maiden who would be joining the other nine contestants. The organizers then called out the name of Auro as the chosen contestant, sponsored by the king, to join the other maidens. She was so shocked, her fellow villagers were also confused, shocked, and jealous. Even Oshakir, her twin sister, was angry. What will a drumstick be useful for in this contest? Oshakir murmured to herself, but they couldn't do anything to stop it. Aworo's parents were overjoyed and started clapping hard, cheering her on. Aworo, still in shock, hesitated to step out at first, but her parents kept clapping, and this boosted her confidence. She stepped out, looking so tall and elegant. 
She was dressed elegantly and with grace as well. As she joined the other nine maidens, the competition began. The first stage was the cooking contest. The competing maidens were tasked with cooking traditional dishes. Aworo, who already had superb culinary skills, finished preparing a meal quickly. It was like a walk in the park for her. The judges tasted the meals cooked by the ten maidens and announced the five who did so well and would be proceeding to the next stage of the competition. It was no surprise to hear Aworo's name as one of the five victors. After all, she was a good cook who made delicious meals already for her family. Before the contest, the second stage was about finding a treasure that was hidden in the forest and the first maiden to return with the hidden treasure would be crowned the Queen Maiden of the Three Kingdoms. But there was a clause, the five maidens had to swim across a river to get to the forest where the treasure was hidden. Many of the maidens couldn't swim fast enough, but Auro could swim a lot faster because she was fit and therefore had light weight. She was the fastest swimmer. She got into the forest and started searching all over for the treasure. She searched and searched, and 15 minutes in, she was still eye searching. Another maiden named Jumok finished swimming and proceeded to the forest. She saw Auro and also started searching for the treasure. A few minutes later, Auro looked at a direction in the bush and saw a blue, shiny treasure. That must be it, she screamed, forgetting it was a competition. The other maiden, Jumuk heard this and raced over to the treasure's direction. It turned into a running competition, because now Auro had to catch up. Both of them ran, but unfortunately for Auro, her cloth was hooked by a tree branch. He fell to the ground, and Jumuk got to the treasure before her, but something unexpected happened. Auro still on the floor, saw a lot of other blue treasures in the bushes. They looked just like the first one she saw, and this made something click in Auro's head. These blue treasures were a bunch of distractions from the real treasure they had come to find. Auro stood up and wanted to tell Jumok, the other maiden, but she learned from her previous mistake and decided to keep this discovery to herself. Jumok on the other hand, raced back to the river bank with the fake treasure and told the three other maidens she had found the treasure. They believed her and felt they already lost the competition so together they swam back to the kingdom. Auro still searching the forest, felt water drip on her from above. She looked up and saw a golden box on a tree. It sparkled so much and this convinced Auro it was the real treasure they were looking for because of a tall figure. She climbed the tree easily and carried the golden box. She opened it and saw several other colors of those blue treasures she saw in the bushes. She closed the box and journeyed back to the palace. Auro got to the palace and every single one I was on her. She looked so tired carrying the big box of treasure. Immediately she got to the rest of the contestants, including Jumok who was looking at her with so much envy the organizers unveiled the drawing of the treasure the maidens were supposed to return with and to Auro's fellow villagers surprise, Auro came back with the exact treasure. She was declared the winner, crowned and named the Queen Maiden of the Three Kingdoms. She was also given lots of treasures, such as gold, clothes and a house of her choice. Our villagers were shocked but had to hide it. They all started showing our affection and apologizing for how they treated her. Her parents were overjoyed and usher care, her twin sister felt so ashamed and didn't know what to say to her. When they returned home, Remembering how much she humiliated her twin sister, Oshaka decided she would pack her things out of the house because she was so ashamed of herself. But Auro stopped her. Why would you leave your family Oshaka? Auro asked. Oshaka started crying. I am so sorry for how I treated you. Auro, you are my twin sister, but I treated you like an animal. 
I prefer to please outsiders than my own flesh and blood. Let me just leave, this shame is so much for me to bear Usher Care cried out loud. Usher Care, I can never hate you, we came to this world through our mother's womb on the same day, I love you Usher Care and I forgive you. The twin sisters hugged each other and lived happily ever after. The moral lessons of this story are numerous, but a moral lesson that stands out is that we should all embrace ourselves. No matter your situation, there is always beauty in being unique or different. When life gives you lemon turn it into lemonade. Stop listening to the noise in the form of mockery or humiliation from other people and because only you and you can show them what you've got. Thank you for watching and please let us know where you are watching from.